there has to be a sense that you can make out of the speed or the rate of change of f at each intermediate point. And in order for the values at the ends to make sense, it has to be continuous. There has to be a link between the values at the ends and uh, what's going on in between. If it were discontinuous, there would be no relation between the left and right values and the rest of the function. All right, so here's the theorem, conclusion, and it's hypothesis. And it means what I said more colloquially up above. Now I'm, I'm going to prove this theorem immediately, at least give a geometric intuitive argument, which is not very different from the one that's given in a, in a very systematic treatment. So here's the proof of the mean value theorem. It's really just a picture. So here's a place, and here's another place on the graph. And the graph is going along like this, let's say. And this line here is the secant line. So this is uh, a comma f of a down here. And this is b comma f of b up there. And this segment is the secant, and its slope is the slope that we're aiming for. The slope of that line is the left-hand side of this formula here. So we need to find something with that slope. And what we need to find is a tangent line with that slope, because this is what's on the right-hand side is the slope of a tangent line. So here, here's how we construct it. We take a parallel line down here, and then we just translate it up, leaving it parallel. We move it up towards this one until it touches. And where it touches, at this point of tangency, down there, I've just found my value of c. And you can see that if the tangent line is parallel to this line, that's exactly the equation that we want. So this thing has slope f prime of c. And this other one has slope, uh, uh, slope equal to this complicated expression, f of b minus f of a divided by b minus a. That is almost the end of the proof. There's one problem. So again, uh, we move a parallel line up. Move up a parallel line until it touches. Uh, there's a little subtlety here, which I just want to emphasize, which is that that dotted line keeps on going here. But when we bring it up, we're going to ignore what's happening outside of A and beyond B. All right? So we're just going to ignore the rest of the graph. But there is one thing that can go wrong. So if it does not touch, then the picture looks like this. Here are the same two points, and the graph is all above. And we brought up our thing, and it went like that. OK, so we didn't, we didn't construct a tangent line if, if this happens. All right, so we're in trouble in that point, in, in this situation, sorry. All right? But there's a trick, which is a straightforward trick. Then um, uh, bring, bring uh, the tangent lines down from the top. Uh, so parallel lines, sorry, not tangent lines. Parallel lines. above. All right? So, so that's, that's the whole story. <laughs>